we are holistic put together we're, we're not designed to be separate and therefore emotion i mean a lot of medical people at a research level will will affirm that this the emotions of the body can have a dramatic effect on you know on the, on the soul can have a dramatic effect on the body and they would go as far as saying that a lot of sickness and disease is emotional mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's not real mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you don't have physical things but actually what is behind it and what opens the door for it is how we are operating in our soul and the emotions that can be quite toxic particularly if they're trauma mm -hmm. that the memory of them can be stored within the physical cells of the body or within the memories of the mind and that memory can be just as powerful as the initial trauma mm -hmm. but often we dissociate from it or we bury it or it's trapped there and mm -hmm. we don't want to revisit it so it mm -hmm. just remains there triggering things within our body and also within our soul some people don't know why they react the way they do to certain stimuli in certain conditions and circumstances they just react you know well it may well be their two-year-old self or three-year-old self or ten-year-old self reacting because mm -hmm. the memory of what happened to them when they were three four ten or whatever gets triggered by a present circumstance that brings it into the sort of the area which begins to operate and therefore some people are like why did i behave that way what caused me to be fearful or anxious or angry you know what triggered that this response to what seemed to be a completely irrelevant or un, you know something they didn't really connect to but because it triggered the memory which is stored within the body and you know i i believe in a sense that we were made new creations in christ but our mind needs to be renewed to the truth of who we are and there can be epigenetic factors which are the things which get passed on generation to generation which are memories yeah they are genetic these stored memories not in the dna which will determine you know what you look like and everything else but attached to it which are triggers which can affect all sorts of different things you know mm -hmm. and some people go through life and everything seems to be relatively okay and all of a sudden something happens and a major trigger happens and they end up going down a path they never foresaw that they would you know and that can be the trigger of a, an epigenetic factor which is a memory stored and that can mm -hmm. lead to a predisposition to certain emotional and physical stimuli and all of a sudden the body reacts from that um, now obviously god wants us to be whole um, but you can't just try and make your body whole without dealing with the, the mind you know and the emotions and everything that's stored within our memory our consciousness um, because they are interactive they they work together and they affect each other you know so something can happen to the body but you remember it you know you remember the trauma of an accident or you and that can be a good thing sometimes it can be don't do this again learn from what you did there because don't do it the next time and you won't have the pain so it's not always a bad thing pain's not not necessarily a bad thing it's an indication something's wrong therefore mm -hmm. you know if we didn't have any pain response we'd end up with missing fingers and all sorts of stuff because we wouldn't even know something had hurt us you know so it, it is designed to help but it's not designed to control mm -hmm. and some people are controlled by the fear of pain or mm -hmm. the fear of emotional pain so they don't want to enter into relationships because they're afraid of being hurt you know, mm -hmm. that's fear attached to emotional pain basically because they've been hurt and heartbroken in the past you know, there's lots of different ways that uh, works but definitely God wants to heal all of the trauma within the body and within the soul mm -hmm. so that we can be completely whole and therefore our physical body not reacting out of 
that memory, that hurt, that pain, or that buried pain, or mm -hmm. emotional situation. Um, and I think emotional pain is probably more harder to deal with than physical pain. Because if you know you've got a pain, then well, how do you fix it? Well, you know, deal with what's causing the pain. That might be, well, there's a muscular pain. Okay, rest the muscle. Or mm -hmm. sometimes you can do exercises to, you know, free up muscles that are frozen, you get frozen shoulders or rotator cuff issues that you have to do certain exercises to build up the strength and free the muscle. You know, so that, you know, if you want to become a gymnast, you're gonna have to do a lot of stretching. Mm -hmm. So you stretch your muscles out, and you stretch your tendons and your you know, hamstrings and your Achilles because you need to be flexible to be able to do the things. You know, I don't think I could do the splits without causing myself some pretty serious <laughs> damage probably. But if I practice for a year and day by day just push my things to stretch and stretch and stretch, and you know, people who do stretching exercises and all that, then eventually you could. You know, some people can't touch their toes. Toes, Well, usually because their hamstrings are tight. So you <laughs> do stretching exercises every day. And I think there's a sense where you can help the body, but when it's an emotional thing, you can't always see it like that, or you can't mm. even feel it in the same way. So you don't realize the restrictions and limitations that might be on you as a result of emotional pain or traumatic memories of other things. Ultimately, I do believe God can heal and restore everything mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. our physical body can come completely into line with the fact we're at rest. But we've mm -hmm. got to come to that place of rest sure. for that to take place. And that ultimately is a place of trust where you begin to trust in God for yeah, the mm -hmm. healing and wholeness that he promises mm -hmm. rather than striving for it and trying mm -hmm. for it. And, you know, working for it in a way which often just causes you more stress and then the body gets more stressed because you're emotionally stressed you know uh, and it's hard when when you have sickness not to let fear or emotional stress or anxiety or worry come in mm -hmm. you know and it's not easy to deal with that and you have to take captive the thoughts yep. and say does this align with how god thinks about me no mm -hmm. so i'm going to reject that thought and i'm not going to play with that thought or let that thought ruminate so i'm meditating on it because it will produce fruit you yep. know if you think about what could happen physically it mm -hmm. can produce fear and mm -hmm. then can affect your whole way of thinking and being you know exactly. so it's dealing with it at its source mm -hmm. and not allowing it to occupy your time mm -hmm. so that it generates fear if you worry about mm -hmm. what might happen you're going to end up in fear and exactly. fear is a very negative emotion because what it does it lowers the frequency of your body, which mm -hmm. actually makes your organs more susceptible to negative things because mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. has a lowered frequency, which is why we need to elevate our frequency by mm -hmm. thanksgiving and gratitude mm -hmm. and praise yeah. and, and all of those outward things where we direct our thoughts towards God with thanksgiving and, and gratitude and praise. And therefore, we're not focusing on ourselves. Yeah, and and that that is it's hard not to do something it's easier to do something else mm -hmm. so focus on the positive and the thanksgiving and actually live in the thanksgiving of what you're looking for yeah so i can be thankful for health and wholeness and my physical body being aligned i can be thankful for uh, that the trauma is released from me i don't have toxic emotions or mm -hmm. uh, that sort of toxic things in my emotions I can be thankful for that and live in the attitude of thanksgiving so that I'm not living in the reality of the situation yeah that is a higher reality because that is God's desire for us mm -hmm. so if I live in a higher reality then the, the present reality because the higher frequency will entrain the lower frequency to come into alignment so if mm -hmm. my mind operates in a high frequency my body can be entrained to come into alignment with that, which is why I choose 
to focus on the positive of my relationship with God, not on the negative of what might be the actual circumstances. It's not denial, because mm -hmm. you're not denying the circumstances. You're just mm -hmm. choosing to focus on what is the solution rather than meditate on the problem. You know, therefore, we turn our eyes, fix your eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. who is the author and perfecter, you know, or the pioneer, the one who leads us onwards into a new land you know because a pioneer goes ahead of other people and says wow it's amazing out here follow me follow on i've made a way for you to come and jesus has made a way for us to live in and this is the where faith comes in faith is the evidence of things not yet seen mm -hmm. faith is not random it's actually based on what god's desire is for us so we base our expectations and hope in what he says. Yeah. And therefore his what he says doesn't align with what is a fact, then the facts can change to come in alignment with what he says when we focus on that way. I mean, Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you've received it. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got to believe you've received it before you've received it. That is where faith comes in. We don't need faith for our relationship with God, but we do need faith to be able to see this process take place where I can live in the creative perspective of what I know is God's desire and my desire in agreement so that I come into that agreement with it. So everything is raised to a higher level of frequency, which is God's mm -hmm. desire and mm -hmm. God's sort of way of thinking about it you know which changes everything because that's going to operate in love and joy and peace you know rather than worry or fear and anxiety but it's not easy when you've got physical <laughs> things which maybe you have to sort of think well no i'm going to choose not to let the physical symptoms affect how i feel because it's how i feel is the issue Mm -hmm. you know, how I feel if I'm feeling loved and accepted and valued and all of those things and if I'm feeling the peace and the rest and the joy then that emotional frequency can elevate my physical frequency into agreement so I become one so my soul and doesn't doesn't descend to where my body is my soul elevates so that my body can be elevated to that place as well but I'm not saying it's easy, you know, you know because you, we have to face there may be symptoms, there may be diagnoses, there may be all sorts of things that we have to choose yeah. not to allow it to affect how we're thinking about the situation. Yeah, because we can be there to encourage one another and to bear each other's burdens and to, yeah. Yeah, um, to help in times of need, you know. Yes. We do need that. And yes. particularly people are physically at a very very uh, low ebb when their physical symptoms are in pain or in other things mm -hmm. you know it's not as easy just to ignore that mm -hmm. um, and set your mind on things above but that's you know what mm -hmm. Paul said you know think of things above think of the good things the things that are positive and you know those are the things to set our mind upon not to be focused on the pain but set our mind on things above that which then can bring change into the situation mm. yeah. but it's not simple you know you know in a sense it's not easy it's, it is a simple thing to think oh yeah i just need to think about something positive but mm -hmm. when you're in that situation and you're in pain it may not be as easy to do it yeah. which is why i would never rule out using medication when mm -hmm. you're in severe pain to, to help manage the pain so that your mind is not distracted by the physical reaction. You know, because there can there are, you know, where do we get painkillers and stuff from? You know, there are natural painkillers. I mean mm -hmm. even even poppies producing, you know, opiates, they are natural things. You know, mm -hmm. so in that sense, you know, the problem is they then become the only solution 
rather than just part of being able to manage pain so that we can live in mm -hmm. that mindset above it you know because yeah. when you're in extreme pain it's not easy to focus mm -hmm. your mind mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah and yeah that's where like you know eastern people who have learned to transcend the physical realm with their mind in a mystic way can lie on beds of nails and all that sort of stuff now I'm not wouldn't suggest that's what we practice doing but they have learned how to manage that pain because their mind is so strong that the pain isn't even pain to them you know now the better thing not to have any pain at all of course but they have learned to say the mind has the power over the body if we learn to focus that and meditation is what they've done to be able to focus the mind and take you to a higher level of frequency If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.